You know, it's not very often we see a political and cultural crossing. Or at least I don't. Probably because I'm too busy yelling slurs at people via anime memes. Oh, and speaking of yelling the slurs, this convo does in fact feature someone that generated one of my most liked tweets, which, come to think of it now, ironically comes from me using a meme of an anime girl yelling a slur. We should really tell you a lot about the twatter. Screw trying to be witty or clever. Just find an adorable anime girl and get her to say Melanie Mac's favorite word, and a good time is to be had by all. And this one, of course, features Destiny, who had the briefest of spats with the critical drinker. And it all came from this one, Rover, spamming men's mental health matters over and over again. And yes, people, the irony is not lost on me. Enter this one, Denisha Carter, who looks like the poster child for a tryhard DEI, so I won't focus too much on this one. If men's mental health mattered to men, they'd be creating safe spaces for themselves and each other. I mean, we didn't need to. Prior to the rebellion of the bourgeoisie bench, they were just kind of there. You know, places like the gym, before it was invaded by a bunch of skimpy dressed tramps with cameras pointing at their asses, as the men were all wondering why the hell are they turning our iron dome into a brothel now piss off. Pursuing therapy and creating community, instead they perpetuate the very behavior systems that have handicapped them in the first place. Nope, I'm with you guys. I haven't the first freaking clue what she is talking about. Refuse to support or create community amongst each other. I mean, they did up until you miserable harpies decided to ruin it because men enjoying themselves absent your presence drives you people insane. Severely damage the women in their lives who try to care for them and attack women online for not doing the work for them in replies to tweets like the one below. I'm going to be honest. I don't know what the hell she just said. That is just word salad ass bollocks. You can really tell this is a misandrist of a female who wouldn't understand masculinity if her life depended on it. It's written like someone who thinks that what works for women will for some reason also work for men. She is clueless and arrogant. Now bear in mind, this was a reply to a single sentence. Where do you think all this came from, I wonder? <laughs> Me thinks there's a lot of projection here. So allow me to clarify what men want. A place where we can say what we want and do what we want without a bunch of ovarian creatures telling us our behavior is toxic and problematic. Now fuck off. That's really it. The irony as well though, is if there happens to be a bunch of ladies that want to engage in that same behavior, most guys won't actually care. The only ones that will are the sexless women who can't find a partner that turn green with envy at the sight of those women enjoying the company of other men. And believe me, sex and attention is all that drives their behavior. It's either envy that someone else is getting attention or wanting to destroy those who give the attention they think they're so richly entitled to and that's it. There is nothing more to them than that. So Drinker comes in. People like you made it literally impossible for men to have any spaces, hobbies, clubs, interests, groups or social spaces of their own. People like you mandated that women must be included in everything they think and do. And now people like you berate them for not wanting the very things they prevented from having. People like you are the problem. Lean and accurate, I agree with everything Drinker just said. And notice the people who advocate for that kind of stuff are the most narcissistically toxic attention-seeking people you can possibly come across. The right side of history types. The ones that have to constantly be seen as having the right opinion. They don't actually care about what happens to anything else around them, so long as somebody else is kissing their ass for saying so. Comments were dead on accurate as well. Kangman Lee with the circle of diversity meme. Demand more room for DEI cringe. Demand the banning of stuff that offends the DEI cringe. Actually ban them. And then whine about them not making their own spaces and repeat the cycle. This mentality is nothing more than life's losers who never got any attention and now they feel emboldened to bully because they've been led to believe their cause is righteous. It's a form of conquering through forced inclusion because they want recognition they could never get on account of them being talentless bellends. They run on the assumption that the reason why the previous segment had the spotlight is through sheer power and nothing else. And if only they got their greedy, grubby hands on the apparatus, they too would be revered. And the reality is, no, they suck, we're better than them, and everything else is cope masquerading as being offended. I mean, you could just look at them. Their appearance, their body type, their lack of skills, talent, charisma, and in an age of the globalized mass, they're just hopelessly unimpressive specimens, more so than they would be otherwise. Oh, and speaking of which, let's look at Destiny's reply, shall we? Isn't the problem right now that we are too segregated into our own spaces? Shouldn't we want more environments where men and women are interacting with each other? You know, Destiny, your lack of self-awareness here is astonishing. <laughs> I'd have thought you would avoid interacting with such a topic, considering your record with the opposite sex is publicly available and wide open. 
which coincidentally also describes your ex-wife, seeing as those phrases apply rather liberally to her sexual proclivities, hence why she amassed a body count higher than the halls of the Vatican, and despite an arsenal of warnings from anything with a pulse, you were sitting there coping, going, Nah, it'll be fine. Isn't the problem right now that we are too segregated into our own spaces? Now, this one sentence, I could almost do an entire video on just this one sentence, and I'll try to explain why. It's so tone deaf and disconnected from not only this conversation, but present reality that I'm actually fascinated by why he would say it at all, which leads me into the potentially why. This is going to sound quite abstract and more than a bit weird, so try and run with me on this one. The way that you would assume normal people respond to information is in a very binary black and white sort of way. If you met information that is new and challenges your worldview, to change accordingly and then move on. That is how you would think humans would behave. But no, because in reality, information and our belief systems are only as useful insofar as what we can get from them. In our present day, and I'll give Thomas Sotomayor credit for making this point, we live in the attention economy. Attention is what drives the machinery, especially on social media where it is obviously the lifeblood. Now, I myself have said this model runs on the 6S echelon, the bottom 90% of which runs on less sex, shock, and stupid. Which brings us back to destiny. The way this works with content creators then, especially the long-term ones that have uh, developed a gimmick or become known for a certain worldview, their following is built on that worldview and so is their paycheck. As a consequence, unless the growth of a different political perspective is done over a long period of time and in such a manner as to give the impression of organic change, any deviation away from the established perspective in a less than satisfactory time frame might bleed viewers and or subs. So now you're at this juncture where you look at this and think of potential justifications for this kind of behavior, particularly if it is often repeated. One, they're incredibly stupid and they can't learn from any mistakes and so they do them over and over again. They actually look like they might have a learning disability. Two, admitting fault might cause their massive egos to fracture and they can't bear it. Or, more likely, three, they can generate a maximum amount of revenue by just saying off-the-wall crazy shit that is bound to get the attention as they operate on the any publicity is good publicity motto. Recognize these are people who make a living giving quote-unquote their opinion, <clears throat> allegedly. And so this becomes a bit of a jam, because once you see this, you can't unsee this. And so when you bear witness to these stupid takes that make no objective sense in any way whatsoever, you start reverting to what combination of these three things are most likely, or hell, it could be all three. And this isn't good for the content creators, essentially peddlers of the piss poor propaganda at best, or flexing their own idiocy at worst. And it gives you a very poor view of the idiots who happen to follow them. Because let's be honest here, shall we? The more a particular individual is known, the more you look at someone with a disdainful manner if you happen to find out they watch that particular individual that you think is an idiot. Never mind the pursuit of objective truth over here. Once you get involved with people's own perspectives of the world, their own incentives, especially with regards to financial rewards, oh, welcome to down the rabbit hole you will go. At least with me, my perspective is way the heck outside the normal political sphere, where it's fun and away from the cringe and gay. Oh, but speaking of the cringe and gay, during the writing of this video, a friend of mine sent me the following. You watched Critical Drinker's Why Hollywood Hates Men video and were critical on the vagueness of his statements and selectiveness of movies he used. Thoughts on the types of movie reviews on YouTube, on those types of re movie reviews on YouTube right now. This is my take. When I feel like people are reviewing movies from a political lens. Okay. Instantly, you're already disqualifying the drinker from this very conversation. And frankly, most people who do any kind of entertainment reviews because these people will very often sing the praises of movies when they don't feature the message. It feels like when people say, I'm skeptical about six million for the Holocaust. Yeah. Yeah. So literally, this is why I even made the video. The entire argumentation on Twitter can be summed up as Marvel movies at World War II. Like, this is the extent of human knowledge that these people are allowed to bathe in. I legitimately detest how much mileage I'm getting out of this clip. It is unreal. Where there is a good conversation to be had, 
but it is almost never by the people asking those types of questions. Yeah. What the hell are you talking about, you dork? It's a movie review, not the exaltation of whatever political perspective gets their jimmies to full mast. I think you could have a fascinating conversation about historical events or mm -hmm. about political themes in movies. I think you could have really cool conversations about it, but it feels like for these people, the political narrative is set in stone, mm -hmm. and then that's retrofit. Like, rather than movies, Rather than like a political narrative or political lens being a way that you might view a movie, the movies just become a vehicle for you to talk about whatever you feel politically. Again, what the hell are you talking about? Entertainment reviewers watch forms of escapism to escape politics, you ham sandwich. And whose ass do you have your head in that you're daft enough to say this all out loud? Audience capture and algorithm. Yeah, so like if you feel like women are shitting on men in society, well, then you're gonna look at movies and go, okay, well, Barbie, huh, jokes about yeah. men, bullshit. Captain Marvel doesn't need a man harbor, bullshit. Uh, Tar, movie about a woman, musician, bullshit. Like, yeah. it's just everything becomes that. And rather than having, like, I think what could be a legitimately interesting conversation about yeah. the roles of men and women in film and the replaceability of different characters or whatever. Yeah, and people notice this is done exclusively for political purposes and the quality deteriorates in a way that is measurable, Destiny. It's called profit. It just, it's like a lowest common denominator of film critique, of any type of critique. Wow, yeah. it turns out that literally everything I watch supports this belief that I have and yeah. propagate on the channel. It was uh, such a journey. I think the making of the project was such a journey and it tells the story of this incredible journey. Or it could be that everyone involved in these failing projects are objectively piss poor at their jobs and are cranking out wank that no one is asking for. My belief becomes explanatory for every single thing in the yeah, world that I have to not given. life. Yeah. It's just and a it's given, just like, you already know, because you're watching the channel. And it's just the lowest level of engagement. Do you mean for the reviewers or the ass that they watch? I'm genuinely confused here. Yeah. Ever. And it's, and it's like, it's lazy. Yeah. And there's, and it's not even like, or at least from what, and I will say, I'll, be, I'll carefully say this, because maybe there's some types of this commentary or critique that I haven't watched, but it's rare that I watch something like this and I'm like, oh, that is really interesting. There could have been, this could have been shot way differently or written mm -hmm. way differently, or something could have changed in this film that would have made it substantially better that the creator's like political vision was mm -hmm. interfering with. I'm told, I hear, I've seen the first episode, but Agatha is the gayest Marvel project yet. Do you agree? I, it better be, because that's, that's what I signed up for. Um, I think it is. Oh, and shout out to Disparu who said, I would love to see the Marvel's market research on how many lesbians watch WandaVision and wanted the Harkness spinoff. There must be tens of millions of them. It's usually more just like, this movie sucks, and there's a woman there, or a trans person, and it would have been way better if not, because I'm going to compare it to this other movie that is yeah. a totally different film. And or people will compare it to films where the obscure demographics and ovarian headcount wasn't promoted as a selling point for the damn movie. It's like, I'm well, familiar with this action movie from the 80s that everybody unanimously loves. Yeah, loves. Why aren't they making the same movie again forever? Mm -hmm. Or maybe why are they trying to do shitty remakes of better movies with a gayer and more diverse cast? Now, is the yeah. main criticism, really. Yeah, so I, I just, I think that's, I think it's worthless. Much like most of your opinions. Yeah. Um, I, I think it is. I think it's without value, and I think it cheapens like critical thought of or, or critical evaluation of a particular medium, whether it's film or anime or whatever the fuck else. Um, and it just becomes like a circle jerk for people to, yeah, view their political narratives and whatever fucking stuff they're consuming, basically. Yeah. You still haven't told us why your political factions drooling over the crap they're represented in is objectively good by any metric. Oh wait, you can't because you just want the reason to bitch about any faction that opposes yours. <sighs> I'm still amazed these people have an audience when they say nothing. My word, I can debunk this slumped over my chair in a drunken haze with ease. But of course, Drinker got in the last word with a single sentence. Speaking of spaces where men and women interact with each other. You know, you would think you would avoid getting into any kind of tiff online when you have a nuclear stockpile of ammo that could shame the Soviet Union that can be used against you at any given moment. Hell, even for memetic purposes, it might be wise to avoid someone whose name implies they're good at taking shots. Only thing near Destiny that was ever good at taking shots was the variety his ex-wife took called Money. Cheers for watching, and once again, I apologize for nothing.